In this video we're going to look at state functions and path functions. So a state is just all the variables needed to completely specify the conditions for a system. So if I know all the variables uh, to specify a state, then I can calculate pretty much any other property of that state that I'm interested in. So for example, if we have an ideal gas, then we know that for an ideal gas, PV equals nRT, and we know that that was also called an equation of state. And it was called that for a good reason, because if you know at least three out of these four variables, P, V, N, and T, then you could calculate the fourth, and any other property of that system you are interested in, you could calculate. So the state for an ideal gas could be specified, for example, by pressure, molar volume, and temperature. From there, you could calculate you know, energy, heat capacity, uh, what, what have you, any other property of that system you're interested in. It is completely specified if you know enough of these variables. So a state function is a variable whose value depends only on the state. So if I know the pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature of an ideal gas, then I know the energy. The energy depends only on those things. So for a monatomic ideal gas, that was just uh, 3 halves nRT. So it didn't depend on what, uh, how I prepared the state. It didn't depend on what path I took to get there. All it depends on is what the value of these variables are and what the state of the system is at this very moment in time. So internal energy or energy would be one example of a state function. Uh, alternatively, you can have a path function, and that would be the opposite, a variable whose value depends on the path taken to prepare a state. So if you prepare, if you have something like heat or work, as we'll see, those are going to be path functions, and those depend on the way in which you uh, achieve that state. It depends on whether you heated it up, whether you cooled it down, whether you expanded it, compressed it, uh, whatever you did, and how, how you went through uh, different states to achieve your final state. Okay, so to mention some of that again, what we're going to have is U, or internal energy, which is kind of like E, as we've had. Sometimes we have energy E, or internal energy U, uh, pretty much the same thing for most cases, and that is a state function. As I said, it only depends on what the state variables are. Alternatively, heat or work and heat, W and Q, those are both path functions. They depend on how we achieve the current state we are in and what method and uh, in what ways we transferred from one state to another. Okay, so for a change in energy during a given process, if we have the differential of energy, or du here in calculus notation, if we want to find out the difference in energy between an initial and a final state, we can integrate the change in energy from the initial to the final state at every point along the path there. And that is equivalent to the final energy minus the initial energy, or the resultant delta U. So generally these DUs in this differential form is generally noted to indicate some type of infinitesimal or microscopic change, and this delta U is, result, is uh, the integrated form of that and generally indicates that um, some macroscopic or large change between uh, between states there, or some final result. So it just depends on the final and initial state. It doesn't matter what happened in, in the middle there. Uh, everything that happened in the middle is irrelevant. We just need the two endpoints to calculate the energy change between the final and initial conditions, and that is true for any state function. But alternatively, for heat and work, we have situations like 
the integral of the inexact differential of work, so infinitesimal amount of work in a certain process, is going to be equal to the work done from the initial to the final state, and this depends on the path. So when we have a variable like this with this delta, that's called an inexact differential, and those are path functions. They don't work the same as these exact differentials, which we saw there, dx being an exact differential. So the only difference being that these are for path functions and these are for state functions. So we have, to, we have to worry about what the path was between the initial and the final states in order to get what the work was during that entire process there. And similarly for heat, the same scenario would be true. dq equals q. Okay, so that's all well and good. But, and then we know by the conservation of energy that the energy change for system, system cannot, you know, energy can't disappear. So for du, we have that that's going to be dw plus dq. And then because of, we can integrate from the initial to the final result, and we have that delta u equals w plus q. Okay, so these two forms here, which are basically the first the first law for closed systems, we have there is the differential form in terms of derivatives and infinitesimals, and we have the integrated form in terms of the final result, the final integrated result integrated form. Wow, not so good today on that. Integrated form. Okay, so we have that any any infinitesimal change in energy must be the sum of the change in work and the change in heat, and any change in energy between the final and init initial and final states must be the work done plus the heat done uh, during that entire process. So this is our conservation of energy for a closed system and that our energy must be accounted for between heat and work uh, when, this is, when these are the only two processes which can exchange energy between the system and the surroundings.